Hello, it's John, and it's currently 36 degrees under clear skies, and what better way to celebrate Valentine's Day and your love for KFC than by playing I Love You Colonel Sanders, a finger licking good dating simulator game. So, I have heard about this game, I have actually never played it. It looks really good, so let's go ahead and start a new game here and see what is in store for us <laughs> with that intro it looked pretty good so let's get going before we get started tell us your name okay I'll tell you my name tell you my name uh, I'll put I'll put my uh, YouTube name in John yes we're gonna confirm wonderful You, see, you sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. But you could wake up now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Smack that clock up and at him. Throw the clock out the window and stay in bed forever. No, smack that clock up and at him. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School Academy of, for Learning. Your mind begins to wonder. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by and you find your imagination getting away from you. You need to take this seriously or you allow yourself to daydream a bit thinking about the future. Um, yeah, let's, we could daydream a little bit. Uh, it's here finally, your first day of culinary school. So many dishes to prepare, so many students to meet. Your mind is swimming with possibilities when you realize you're running late. You grab a biscuit and burst out the door in a hurry. <laughs> Delicious. Just what you needed to wake up those taste buds. Yikes, you're in such a hurry, in fact, that you forgot to put on any deodorant before running out the door. You're sweating buckets as you rush to arrive on time. Uh-oh. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Mer Miriam? Miriam? She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. <clears throat> Let me see what voice I can do for this. Let's see. Good morning, John. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Actually, I'm... Because I sure am. Excited. A little nervous, okay? Okay, a lot nervous. What's the... It's just that. This morning, I made breakfast for myself, but... Well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Classic Miriam, raised by master chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quicksand box, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. <laughs> but with University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning's famous three-day only semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. Three days. A sweet girl. Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. Oh my. Should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? Um. Let's pep talk her. You've got this. You've got this. Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had our uh, <clears throat> tarot cards read? The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. I know she looks spooky, but she was so sweet. And she told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy looking tower? And that other card featuring the handsome fella in the red suit? I've been waiting so for so long to meet that handsome fella I could call my own and I'm sure you will soon 
in no time will be graduating and you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk, as you talk Mary up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. Can you believe I cut them myself? You can definitely believe it. I was about to say that. I really was. I, uh, I cannot believe it. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Hey! It's Ashley. <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> it's Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you know, you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants, and she knows it. Hello, Ashley. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken skins. You leave John skin shins alone. Oh, shins, excuse me. They're perfectly normal shins. Is that, she got chicken? She's got drawings of chicken. <laughs> chicken legs on her legs. Uh, you can't stand Ashley. Even, even her name is annoying. <laughs> you know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she had to add the extra letters to make her feel, <laughs> feel better than everyone. <laughs> if anyone here knows what perfect skins look like, it's us. We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van, the man man, has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight, you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. <laughs> no lie, they're rocking glutes. Ahem, Van Van. You ring ring. You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. I can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You'd think they'd just hand us our diplomas now. Or maybe hire us as a professor. You amateurs could learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just not time to properly tell these two off, so you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. Oh, see you later, loser. As you approach the door, you see a goofy looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. Pop. Oopsie. Oopsie. I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. I love you. I think you mean thank you. My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Hi, Pop. I'm John, so... Are you going to make me hold this door all day? Nope. And with that, the young man walks to the building ahead of you. Aww. Is it just me, or is he kind of cute? I think it's just you. Mm -hmm. You both shrug your shoulders before following him in the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. A scruffy looking pooch takes his place at the podium at the front of class. Adorable. Sprinkles. <laughs> uh, how, do, how, how am I going to do sprinkles? Now, now, quiet down everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Please call me Professor Dog. I may be cute 
and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof. What a cute dog is our professor. This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuisances of fine dining. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as you swirl the swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside of the classroom. I'm chilly. Someone close the window. And then he walks in. You're immediately swept by the, in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him. It's... If it isn't my favorite student, Harland. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog, before you can finish his sentence. Please... Please call me Colonel. I don't know how to do his voice. <laughs> I can't do his voice. Please call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. Uh. And this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. <laughs> Maybe we should open that window back up before a faucet pit smells into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Hold on just a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. You two both know my name. We're in the same kindergarten. We were in the same kindergarten class. And what is with all your really weird insults? Besides, when John sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at his shimmer. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you turn to find Colonel Sanders standing right in front of you. Okay. Colonel Sanders, beautiful angel that he is, stands before you smiling gently, his hand outstretched. Boy howdy, this classroom gets hotter than a Kentucky fryer. Please use my handkerchief. I, can, I, I, I cannot do the voice, I cannot. You freeze up, Colonel Sanders is talking to you. Wait, Colonel Sanders is talking to you about how sweaty you look? You're completely mortified. This can't be your first interaction. What if he never forgets this moment? How will you respond? Uh, well, it's gonna make me look more awkward if I refuse the handkerchief, so might as well just take it, right? You stretch out your hand, and Colonel Sanders places a fine silk handkerchief. Handkerchief, handkerchief, and you're in it. It's so beautiful. I just had harps come from it. It's so beautiful you hesitate to press it to your face, but when you do, the feeling is trans transcendent. It has na has natural scent on it. It smells of the most delicious chicken you've ever smelled. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and set some ground rules. Welcome to University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends, past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny food. And when, when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and compete in the bro broom cooking arena. Just then, another student in the classroom interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Student. Hi guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss... Quiet! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time. Rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheel, you turn to see the student Sprinkles is referencing. 
There appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. The class bursts into laughter. Oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm. Your diet is liking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you're, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. You never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkles' reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket, but what kind? Well, obviously it's got to be chicken flavor, right? Chicken snack? You reach beneath your apron and return chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkles' eyes go wide as he locks onto it. His favorite. Well, 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 I think there might be some competition for a new star student. The furry professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hand slick with a coat of warm doggy drool. You see the other students eyeing you jealously. Je jealously, but pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prefer to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everything rushes to claim, as everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey John, there's still a seat here. It seems that no one has claimed this seat next to me, if you're interested. Two good options, but which will you choose? Well, of course we're going to sit by Colonel Sanders. Sorry, Miriam, or whatever you're... Whatever, I forgot. I already forgot your name already. Of course, we're going to sit by Colonel Sanders. You move to take your seat by Colonel Sanders. It appears he brought no books, pens, or pencils. However, his perfect upright posture shows off a seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. Thanks for offering me this seat. I've only had two rules: and do all you can do. Do all you can and do it to the best you can. It's the only way you'll ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. That's so inspiring. A little off topic, if you ask me, but okay. As soon as you settle in your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz. Yay, a quiz about me. This incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you're ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question number one. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Doesn't matter, but depends. I, well, it, it is extremely important to wash your hands. It kills the germs. Looking at you, Pop. That's right. Forest is to tree as chicken is to night vision goggles. <laughs> Slam dunk. Feather, right? That's right. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A comically oversized fork, a meat tenderizer, or well, of course it's a spork. That's right. What food is best for a broken heart? Anything as long as it's prepared with love and not much too salt. But not too much salt. It's a camel meat, a pancake that looks like a silly face. I guess something that is prepared with love. That's right. Is Sprinkles a good boy? No. <laughs> He's a talking doll that teaches culinary school. He is the best boy. That's right. I got a perfect score. All right. Your total score is five out of five. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> wow, be honest. Did you cheat? You look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He's impressed. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Well, thank you, Colonel Sanders. Hot diggity, John, you just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. 
May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch. Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I... Shh. Lunch, lunch, lunch. She said, shh. In honor of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Uh-huh. That must be the smell I smelled. Yes. Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this... Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. It contain, con, its contents glimmer in the light. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. Mmm, the aroma envelops you, and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say, Stop thinking and start eating. For years, I've been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's not all I'll say about it. What? You think we want your stupid recipe, dude? Pshaw! Nah, my dude, nah. I'm just, uh, drafting a last will and testament in case one of those students is, a uh, poison. Got him. He looks around nervous to see anyone else laughing at his sick burn. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just, like, writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment the, that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry a chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. <gasps> Stay away from him! She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. Mm. Oh, please. Mm. Well, Van Van, the man Matt, if you don't want any, I'll take his. Whoa, hold on, I mean... I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes glow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act at a press. Easy now, there's enough for everyone. Please follow, please my fellow classmates, dig in. You take one of those, one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Focus your mind and meditate on this moment. Try and identify every flavor, savor the moment, and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Uh, swim toward the light. Somewhere up ahead, a bright light beckons you. The flavors are so intense, you become wrapped up in them. Unable to resist, you reach toward the light. It grabs your hand and pulls you closer. Closer. Until your fingertip connects with the end of everything. You are forever lost in the land of tender fried chicken bliss. Your mind dissolves. There is no John now. There is only herbs and spices. Though Miriam tries to revive you, she cannot. Game over. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I died. <laughs> it was so delicious. I died. Uh, try again. Yes, try again. Wait, I'm not gonna have to restart, am I? Am I gonna have to? Oh gosh. Okay, and I, I'll be right back until we get to the same point it was before. Okay, we're back. Okay, so we won't swim toward the light this time. Um, all right, we're gonna savor the moment. We're gonna savor the moment. The flavors in your mouth are beautiful, pure, heavenly. What a guy. Along with the flavors, you feel something that can only be described as love. For a man, for a flavor, are they the same? After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. Approach him. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? <gasps> How bold to come out and ask. I got an idea. Where did you get the staff? It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that would make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester's only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel? Shouldn't learning be fun? Aww. You've got moxie. I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, and then he leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use boop. <laughs> it's something my great grandmother taught me. Thank you for sharing that. Bloop! Wow. You never guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. <laughs> While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again, howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I graduate. Sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I leave my mark on this world. You can bet that. Alone together for the first time. You figure now is the perfect moment to show, show him your per, show your personality to him. I cannot read today. Nag him to show your own strength. Wow him with a big idea to add an additional ingredient to really spice things up. Be modest but thoughtful. I guess we could be modest but thoughtful. Well, I just wanted to tell. Look at those hearts. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery. It was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, John. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Wait a second. Oh no. We have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? You're not going to blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but able to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? Oh, no, I'm going to lose my best friend. <laughs> a team of two. 
that is. Me and you, if uh, that wasn't clear, want to be my partner? Aww. Sure, John, I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner. Beep boop. Bzz, bzz. Oh my, two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. Looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Okay. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Um. Well, she'd probably hate me if I pick Pop. <laughs> Let's pick Clank. Clank. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay. I already ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clear. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Or, or, or. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Bzz. Tissue? I hardly know you. <laughs> Clank judders and a side and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. Alright, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up these the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest your partner? to your partner Colonel Sanders. Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes and gravy. Well, of, of course, we've got to do my grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. That beats all the other ones. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes. <gasps> and gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you. <laughs> Cast, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn it right. Oh my gosh, I love this game already. Alright. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please. Let me... Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. <laughs> Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. <clears throat> Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business. And you'd better keep your fingers off my man. Did someone call for me? <laughs> Uh, no, jeez, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing John's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley Van Van. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. It looked like John was struggling, so we offered to give him a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. <laughs> Doubt it. Don't be rude, Bon Bon. Personally, I have no doubts so whatsoever. Ever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has poisoned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we can cast complementary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes sense. The one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel. If you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. 
Turn to Colonel Sanders, hunk of hunks, in your time of need. Turn to Miriam, the forever bestie always has your back. Let's do Miriam. Miriam, Miriam, Miriam. She's always got my back. You turn to Miriam as soon as you find her. She senses it and looks back. This girl's friend of me, Radar, is second to none. She's immediately comes running over. Really is somebody threatening my friend? I will destroy them. I actually think Ashley and Bam Bam will just leave him. Leaving you in the dust? This is my skill with this stuff. Perhaps by stepping away from this competition, you are sorely mistaken. Miriam, you're a loyal friend, but John is my partner for today's activity. You look for sprinkles and hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn his cute quarters in a short but sturdy made stature. You look down at your station and realize that. In the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilots. Distracted by the drama, you already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mash texture. There's plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention is elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Oh my. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny Boo would be very proud. Colonel Sanders holds his fork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same fork, and for that mo small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Van Van, do something. Do something. Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, John. We do not waste food in the broom cooking room. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have potato face? Van Van rushes back over a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potato, mashed potatoes with the gravy. Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I prepared a full meal. Glaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle octopus and my silky saltwater salt. Plated on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. <laughs> You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have first bite, and you will look. I'll look at it on with envy. The interrupted student rushes at Van Van and strikes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late, it has been eaten. I, uh, think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. It killed him. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Everyone stick back. Don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it's gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, then is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie. Tastes like poison. The entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping 
everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Ghost of student. Um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaking up but that really annoying student and all this nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quads and the young glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him that tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, John? There's something I need to tell you. <laughs> Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef in the world has ever seen. And every day since, I have been working toward that dream day and night. Never stopping, never resting, also lifting a lot of weights. Like, so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts. That our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. <gasps> hey, no, I, you... Shut up. I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. Hmm. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance you hear a long, sad sigh. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. The sport monster is here to fight a hero. What? I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. How dare you threaten me? Just as I was letting my just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid. Be very afraid of me, because I'm a monster, see? Is he rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? Or you can discuss syntax any further. It's a turn-based fight sequence. What will you do? Oh my! Um, a attack, yes. He decided to go on the attack. I don't know how much HP I have. Well, how much? Which attack will you use? Uh, the only one I have, of course, Cook with Love. Cook with Love does one damage. It just got real. That attack really upset Sport Monster. Sport Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Um, I guess we could defend next. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Uh, trepidation, of course. You continue to stay back and endure whatever comes your way. Seems like a pretty weird strategy, but okay, sure, you do you. Sport monster focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Oh my gosh. <laughs> attack. I'm loving this game. You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Uh, cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. Sport Monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble. They go on the attack once again. Sport Monster uses Utilitensil. You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Attack again. You decide to go on the attack. 
Cuckoo Love. Cuckoo Love does one damage. Put my nose oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who is going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable. Sport once repairs for his ultimate attack. Rounded Edge. Vow, villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of 1,000 chickens. Oh my. Pot Pie Power Pincher. Pot Pie Power Pinch does 10 damage. Sport Monster is defeated. You saved me. An injured sport monster spews steam into the night. Forget mercy. Finish him or spare this wretched beast. Let's let's spare him, I guess. You manage to tamp down your disgust and study this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity. Not your right. Be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back for a follow up encounter tomorrow. What about tomorrow? Why would you? Why, why were you specific about it? I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back like you said. The sport monster scuttles off into the night. The monster left behind a special item. It appears to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borco. Hmm. <laughs> Borco? That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding a mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home in your tired state. You don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled over you as you are tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Oh my... You wake on day two in attempt to process the wild visions that you had. Were they memories or premonitions? And then there was a secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure. That makes sense. Well, we'll go with that. Yeah, we'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the sport monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um, I think I might like Clank. Of course you would. Like him? Like, like, like? I know it sounds so move, it's moving too fast. I know it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. We got to talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he was really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Okay. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his school? High school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he voted prom king at the school, and he didn't even go to... He was very popular. He was voted prom king at the school he didn't even go to. And was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. Okay, I'm thinking maybe something got lost in the pressure cooker language translation there. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders? The coolest guy in school? The most famous student to ever attend University and Cooking School Academy for learning? You're a thing now? We definitely connected yesterday. I, I don't think I don't think we we did connect that much. Ah, uh, sure you did. You're great. Why would he be into you, I guess? Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? I cannot read today. Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. 
you have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Bam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So, this summer while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wondering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices! The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me, and the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much to use to anyone. Please, just please, it would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or Colonel Sanders. I cannot tell you. What would you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? <sighs> um... We're gonna make up a fake ingredient, because I'm, I'm not sure that telling her would be the best option here. <laughs> You could only think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know, how about... It was Eye of Newt. I know it sounds like some kind of witch potion. But what can you do? Eye of Newt? Wow. Her eyes light up imagining such a thing, and you figure that you've satisfied her curiosity, and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask to confirm what she's... That she's definitely not texting. I missed it. I clicked. A wind rushes and cherry blossoms fill the air. It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school on his horse. On his horse. Of course he has a horse. Stand back and admire his majestic glory or run to him. Okay. I think I'm going to end it here. This game, this game looks really good and I'm, 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 I'm definitely going to continue it uh, later so I'll see you for part 2 next time um, alright everybody have a happy Valentine's Day and everybody have a wonderful rest of the day goodbye see you later